Hi, my name is Mike, and today I'm going to be showing you how I repair the cutoff potentiometer on my Moog Grandmother synthesizer. Uh, I've had this unit for over three years now, so it is well out of warranty, so I'm not worried about voiding warranty or anything like that. Um, originally, there was no problems, but just recently there became a dead point right around 12 o'clock on the cutoff. distortion right around 12 o'clock. Um, now I've tried the standard uh, deoxid uh, fader F5 spray that really didn't do anything. Uh, so I contacted Moog um, and they actually just sent me some replacement pots. Um, I paid for shipping and they sent me actually two pots so uh, I'm going to figure out how to take this all apart and replace that pot. Um, I've never taken this apart before, so it should be interesting. Um, so, okay, let's get to it. Okay, now I've got the bottom screws holding the bottom plate removed. I can kind of lift up, lift it up a little bit, and it's not going to show on camera very well, but there's some. Uh, connections from the spring uh, the spring tank right here that connect to the circuit board down here it's a 3.5 millimeter plug yes it, it plugs in uh, has to pull out that way towards the key bed so, so that unplugged like that so now I have a little bit more room I can kind of slide this back a little bit more still want to be careful because there are still two ribbon ribbon cables connected so we still have this ribbon cable from the mod uh, wheel section that connects right here and this just pulls out directly towards the key bin. There's not really a release or anything for that. It's kind of hard to see but it just pulls directly out. That's just a ribbon cable there. Now we have this other cable here for the key bed and it's similar to a Eurorack uh, power and it pulls straight down or if the synthesizer was in the correct direction it would be up but we have it upside down so it's kind of hard to see here we're going to rotate everything a little bit that pulled straight down like that so now the whole key assembly and body is or bottom is free it is still there's some tabs here so we got to work it around these tabs and we can pull it away. Okay, now I'm going to start disassembling the board so I can get to that potentiometer. It looks like I'm going to have to remove all of the knobs and all of the nuts so I can get these boards off, or at least this board. But I'm going to just take everything off and just see what's underneath. Okay, so I found that now they have all the nuts out, the left side wants to drop down before I can get the left or uh, the right side out. So I'm going to put one nut back on, just uh, finger tight here, just to kind of as a safety uh, measure to hold that circuit board in place. Um, now I'm going to turn it around and take the nuts off the top section. I can see as I'm taking that last screw out, the circuit board's wanting to drop. So I'm going to hold off and leave that last screw in there before I can kind of stand it up, get things supported here. So now that bottom board is loose. Actually, everything should be loose at this point. So now I'm going to, let's see, I'm just going to disconnect these two ribbon cables. They're just like that last one. Just inspect it real quick. Okay, just figured out my first mistake. Uh, the little ribbon cable here, same with these bigger ones, 
I thought just pulled directly out. I was wrong. And there is actually a little clip in there. Luckily when I pulled it, it released. But I should have reached in and pulled the clip uh, towards me or towards, towards the camera this way. Pushed back, it's locked, and then pulled forward. Uh, it's really hard to see that because it's mounted in there and you don't have much room to look at. So you basically just got to reach in with your finger, feel that, and feel that lip and pull it forward. So on these boards over here, I'm going to pull that black lip forward and it clicked, releasing it, and then it came out so much easier. I pulled quite hard and it, it, it released on its own and it didn't damage anything, but that definitely wasn't the right way to do it. Let's see. And this one pulled towards me, it clicked, and then now it comes up. And I'm just going to remember the blue is facing towards me on all of these original cables. Now we can just take this board and set it aside. So now I think these are going to come loose. I'm going to take off my hand loosened nut over here. Alright, and that is the main synth. And it looks like our cutoff knob is right here. The potentiometer that Moog sent me. Yep, and it looks like it matches up. Alright, before I get moved on, I'm going to give a little close up of the board and what's going on there. Okay, I just wanted to quickly show some of the hidden PCB art that you would only ever see if you had these boards removed. Uh, for example, over here there's a noise section, and we have a little noise diagram. Then we got the triangle wave right here. Over here, there's a little stair stepping for the ARP. Um, down here, there, this is for the pulse width modulation, different uh, amounts of uh, uh, pulse width. And then let's see, then there's a lock over here for the uh, sync lock for the two oscillators. We have a little cake mixer for the audio mixer section. Um, oh yeah, there's a little, I'm not really sure what this is for, this little uh, formula. And then moving over to the next board. A little plus minus for the attenuator. Um, little slope here for I guess I'm guessing that's the envelope uh, or the attack. Yeah, because then here we got the envelope here. Um, we have a little uh, squiggly line here. I think this is for the amplifier. Um, I think I'm not sure. Down here we have a little spring for the spring out for the spring uh, reverb tank. And then finally the famous ladder filter. And I believe this is the actual filter right here. This whole thing. So pretty cool. You only ever see these little pictures if you get all of these parts out. I got the new pot that Moog sent out. It is a slightly different color, uh, but it is the same value and it has the same feel. Um, and the Moog tech did warn me that it might look slightly different, but it's the same pot. Um, so that is actually right here. So I'm gonna start um, by adding some solder. I probably don't need to do this with newer electronics. I always do this for older stuff because older solder kinda gets, uh, stuck sometimes. I probably don't need to do this, but it's just a habit. I add a little bit of solder first, which kind of seems counterintuitive, but it helps with the heat transfer. Then I'm using some of this um, uh, solder wick. Okay, so with the solder wick, um, I'm just going to heat the solder up, and kind of heat through the wick and it'll just draw that solder into the wick. 
once it's hot, you can kind of pull the wick through the liquid solder and it'll keep drawing it through. Takes a little bit to get the solder all nice and molten, but once it gets going, it sucks it up pretty well. These little pins are seem like they're removing okay. These big pins are not sucking the solder up so well, so I might have to take a few more tries at this one. There we go. You can kind of see it just pulled away. It took a couple of tries, uh, but I was able to, with the wick, uh, just kept heating and uh, it kept drawing the solder out until I got uh, all five pins uh, free. There we go. Got the replacement potentiometer right here. And it should just snap right in place. There we go. Those two little latches kind of hold it in place. And I'll just flip the board back over and solder it back into place. Okay, I got everything put back together, all the nuts put back on, and every, all the ribbon cables connected and ready for the final test. Sounds good. Right at 12 o'clock, there's the distortion is no longer there. We have a nice, clean filter suite. So that solved it. Um, I think that's it. All right. Thanks for watching.